In COVID times, a march through the city of Southfield couldn't happen, but organizers still find a way to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his legacy. Plus, problems and confusion mount because of the slow coronavirus vaccine rollout. We have what you need to know if you are eligible to, in fact, receive a vaccine. But first, we woke up to some snowflakes on the ground on your Monday morning, and more are in store for you today. Meteorologist Brandon Root is in with a look at the timeline as to what we can expect. But we do begin here at noon with some breaking news for the nation's capital as the city remains on edge after the deadly riot. Capitol Police just ordered a lockdown during inaugural rehearsal. Participants in that rehearsal on the west front of the Capitol were evacuated by security officials not too long ago. And we just learned that that alert was related to a fire that happened near the building. It is not believed to be a threat, but still the Capitol is on lockdown. Meanwhile, federal investigators continue to chase thousands of leads in efforts to prosecute people involved in the deadly U.S. Capitol riot and to try and prevent follow up attacks. This all comes as Michigan Representative Debbie Dingell speaks out about the riot. It really was an attack on our democracy and an attack on our government. But I really want to say to you, one of my colleagues said to me, you're so calm. I wasn't calm, but I, I, I did. I, if you are Gretchen Whitmer or Dana Nessel, or Rashida Tlaib or myself, this is what we deal with when we are at home every single day. I'm always alert. I don't know where it's going to come from. And by the way, you know, I got circled by one of the Trump caravans and the flags and everybody got scared. I went up and talked to them. We got to stop this conflict. We've got to try to figure out how we're going to talk to each other. But what happened last week was clear collusion. It could have been much, much worse it is shaking people's faith in the fundamental pillars of our democracy. And I'll be damned if they're going to let that happen. And we are going to fight back. And that means all of us have to fight back. And she means it. Back to inauguration security measures, though. Thousands of National Guard troops and other law enforcement officers are now manning an expanded perimeter around the heart of the city. And as Jay Gray reports, leaders are asking Americans not to come to D.C. to witness this historic inauguration. The buildup of troops in Washington continues. More than 15,000 soldiers now posted around the Capitol and across the city, with another 10,000 expected before Wednesday's inauguration. It is a deterrence for people who are going to do bad things. This is to keep people safe and to understand that we are here for the American people. The show of force stretching across the country right now. State capitals continue to be on high alert after a warning from the FBI of possible protest and violence from armed right-wing extremists. Hopefully it will be peaceful and then hopefully people will go home, but we just need people maybe to take a deep breath. The country still trying to catch its breath. After the deadly attack on the Capitol complex. We never believed uh, that so-called patriots would attempt to overthrow their government uh, and kill police officers, but that's exactly what happened. Security teams remain in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, this security presence is expected to stay in place in some form, not only here, but across the country, well after Wednesday's inauguration. Jay Gray, NBC News, Washington. All right, Jay, thank you for the update there. Let's turn our attention to the forecast now on your Monday afternoon. We're giving you a live look through our outside sky cam. Let's turn things over to meteorologist Brandon Rue to talk some snow and what we can expect for this afternoon. Yes, on this MLK day, it is going to become a little snowier as we head through the afternoon. Temps are hovering right around freezing. Wind chills low to middle 20s if you're heading out right now. And right along I-69 up north, parts of I-75 through Genesee County, getting some light snow, but waiting for some of these bands to break free from Lake Michigan. So our north zone will see a little more than the rest of us, and temperatures pretty much staying where they are. Just a quick little glance at one of our snow models. You can see a half an inch or a little bit more north of M59 Evrod. We do have a couple of other snow chances this week coming up. All right, Brandon, thank you. We'll check in with him in just a little bit because right now we want to turn our attention to the coronavirus as the first case of a COVID-19 variant believed to be more contagious is detected in Michigan. This new variant, however, still uh, the coronavirus vaccine will still work against it. But we learned about this on Saturday and the health department says that an adult woman living in Washtenaw County contracted this new variant after traveling to the UK. 
In the meantime, officials with the Centers for Disease Control are saying that the virus variant could be the main strain here in the U.S. by March. The United States has passed 23,942,000 coronavirus cases and more than 397,000 people have died from the virus. These are numbers from the Johns Hopkins University database. In the meantime, concerns about vaccine availability and distribution are ramping up. We got a chance to catch up with Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter, and we asked his opinion. We don't have the vaccines we need, the number of vaccines we need. We're, we're, we have the capacity to do a lot more uh, than we're able to do now. It's been frustrating. I think we're all frustrated. I know the governor is frustrated because I've talked to her. And part of it is, and, and, and we just saw this from the federal government, they said they were going to rele releasing the rest of the supply. And then it turns out there is no rest of the supply. There, there, there was no stockpile. But I'm optimistic based on what I've heard from the president-elect that they're going to take this more seriously and that they're going to get more vaccines in the hands of health professionals like, like in Oakland County. And moving over to Wayne County now, officials there are having to reschedule some of the vaccination appointments because they simply don't have enough of the vaccine. The county says that they'll be rescheduling appointments for about 1,400 frontline and essential workers who were supposed to get their first dose on Tuesday and on Wednesday. The county ran out of the Pfizer vaccine on Saturday, and they're expecting a shipment of the Moderna vaccine this week. County officials say that they'll start vaccinating those workers again on Thursday, and they'll be contacting people about their new appointment. We at uh, the county, and specifically the county health department, are working very aggressively in addressing the need that is out there and trying to accommodate every group that we are supposed and are responsible for. However, the challenges are we cannot predict the quantity and the frequency of the vaccine we are getting. And anyone who is set to receive their second dose of the Pfizer vaccine will not be impacted by this. Washtenaw and St. Clair counties have also been forced to cancel clinics because of vaccine shortages. Meanwhile, the short supply of the vaccines is causing nationwide frustration. As you can imagine, people in the U.S. are having a hard time just getting one vaccine, while others are not getting their critical second dose. And as Carrie Sanders reports, there was a scare involving a large number of Moderna vaccines in California. California reaching an unwanted milestone, becoming the first state to pass 3 million COVID cases. Health officials there are investigating a large batch of Moderna vaccines after a higher than usual number of severe allergic reactions at a San Diego clinic. The second I said something about my ear, they all like sprung into action. They grabbed an EpiPen and they took me from the area where I was sitting at onto a gurney. 330,000 doses of those vaccines have already been distributed to nearly 300 providers statewide who are now being asked to delay using the shots. Meanwhile, the nation's demand for the COVID vaccine unrelenting, while distribution of the highly sought after shot is falling far short. We stand uh, very, very vulnerable and you're the state is supposed to be helping us. Much of the anger directed at the Trump administration's failure to provide the stockpiles of vaccines it promised. And the fact that we've underdelivered to so many states on this second dose is deeply concerning. And frustrating. It is a total cluster. In Florida, the Department of Health says more than 40,000 people who received their first vaccine dose failed to show up for the second. Your fear for those who skip the second dose? There's no ability to be uh, flexible with that. There's no ability to be the exception to that rule here. You need to get that second dose. By inauguration day, the COVID death toll could reach 400,000. At the current rate, health officials fear we could reach a half million deaths by February. President-elect Biden promising 100 million doses in his first 100 days. The feasibility of his goal is, is absolutely clear. There's no doubt about that. That, that can be done. And that was Carrie Sanders reporting. Today we honor the life and legacy of the late civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream. <laughs> My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. It's a speech you will always remember, part of his iconic I Have a Dream speech.
Here at home, the city of Southfield and the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Task Force held a COVID safe parade to honor his legacy and local force Nick Monticelli was there. He has all the details. Good afternoon. About two hours ago, about 200 cars filed out of this parking lot at Hope United Methodist Church, all to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Take a look at this. The lineup was massive. Like I said, 200 cars filling this parking lot. Uh, age ranges from young all the way to old VIPs, county, federal, state, local leaders. So many people here. What's interesting, though, is that there seems to be kind of a different theme in this celebration. This whole thing is put on by the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Task Force for the city of Southfield. Even organizers said, despite COVID, this absolutely had to happen for a couple of reasons. Number one, of course, to honor the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and what he did for this country, for civil rights as a whole, but also to use his words and apply them to what's happening in this country today trying to find some kind of peace, unity, and get rid of the division. Many people saying what he said 50 years ago applies now. We've gotten very polarized right now, and, and you know, we could use a figure like Dr. King, somebody who could speak beyond our divisions and our differences uh, and speak to the, the common nature of all of us. Uh, he, had an, he had a unique ability to do that. Lifting up each other. It doesn't matter what color, what race, and what creed. We're all in this together. So it's about solidarity, sisterhood, brotherhood, loving each other. I want people to think about peace. I want people to think about how can we come together as a community and as the United States. I want people to think about what can you do as an individual to make it better in our world today. Now this event put on by the task force, this is their 36th year in operation. And again, they said canceling this was never an option. In Southfield, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Yeah, they found a great way to still have it. Thank you, Nick. And a drive-by MLK Day rally happened in Romulus this morning. This was an event hosted by the Romulus Ministerial Alliance. A drive-by march started at Romulus Community Baptist Church. It ended at Pentecost Baptist Church, and that's where community leaders took a little bit of time to speak about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. Something to remember today uh, in our current climate. All right, still to come here. On Local 4 News at noon, there was no Mega Millions winner on Friday. There was no Powerball winner on Saturday. And that means there is a lot of money up for grabs this week. <laughs> the near record-breaking jackpots. Kiss it for good luck. That's coming up next.